Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Day Spotlight. Today, we're going from Florida all the way out to Keystone, Colorado, where we find 14-year-old junior late model, super late model driver, Brody Moore. Brody, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Rod. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I, what, what else could I be doing, man? Getting a chance to be able to talk to you. I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of like spot on. So you got a great year going on. I mean, if we want to talk about drivers that have really turned it around since last year, you got to be at the top of the list here. Um, again, let's, let's get into your junior late model racing a little bit first, and, and that's being taken on at Madera Speedway. So how would you kind of grade yourself, and, and what have the, been the highlights so far of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series out at Madera? Well, uh, since last year, we've definitely upped our game. I feel like going into the 2021 race season, uh, we went into this race or the first race um, having a lot more experience. Uh, we got a new car from the head injuries. So we got a new car. And like I said, we got more experience. So I definitely think that's paying off now. Last season, it felt like we were kind of just in the wrong, uh, wrong places at the wrong time. But this season, we started off the season with a third place finish. So just from the first race, we've definitely improved. And I think we've only had uh, one finish outside of the top five. Uh, which was actually the last place. We went into the last race, third in points, and the top three were separated by eight points. But instead of battling for the lead like we were the last race or the race before last, um, we were battling carburetor ignition problems all weekend. So I think we'll get those figured out and we'll be back out there June 26th and hopefully we'll be back out there. Yeah, you are definitely correct. You've only had that one finish. You're currently setting six in points. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Let me take that back. You're fifth in points six points out of third so yeah. I mean you're definitely right there in the hunt of things so let me ask you what what do you think the biggest change has been I, I have noticed that your qualifying has been a, a lot better this year because we all know that if you if you don't qualify good and you get stuck in the back that's where things start to happen and then the other thing I've been noticing kind of watching your races is it seems like you really have improved on your restarts so what would, your, what would your assessment of those two things be? And do you think those things are uh, having an effect on, on you having such a, a much better year? Yeah, so like I said before, I think it's just a lot of experience that we gained from the, from the first race. And since uh, Mid-Year Speedway isn't in iRacing, I've been able to find a track that's kind of close to it um, size-wise. So I've been doing some iRacing that's, I think, helped with my restarts. I've been able to put in some AI cars that, I've been able to practice restarts, but I also think that some of the people who have started the races, um, I think some of the restarts are a lot cleaner and I've been able to kind of judge what year to start in. Uh, last season, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of a game of cat and mouse where you wouldn't quite know what gear to start in, but I think it's definitely, um, the restarts have been a lot better and I'm definitely gaining a lot of experience. So I got to ask, what iRacing track are you running on that you feel is similar to Madera? Um, I can't, I think it might be Sobo. So it's not uh -huh. exact identical um, track to Madeira. There's a lot more banking in the straightaways, have a little bit of banking on them too. But I believe size-wise, I believe they're about the same. Yeah. Well, good. So um, you kind of take yourself where you're at now. And then the opportunity came for you to be able to put yourself in a super late model. So it, it's kind of funny because that smile just said it all. It's kind of like every time I talk to somebody, you know, about going from a junior late model or a pro late model, and I talk, I say the word super late model, this big smile comes on everybody's face. So tell us the difference between these two cars and what it's like to, to, to drive the two different types of vehicles. Well, so obviously there's a power difference. The super late model has about 615 horsepower. And then the junior late model only has about 300. And I think ours dynoed at like 388. So there's about a good 300 horsepower um, there. And we also, so in the super late model at Colorado National Speedway, which is my home track, we actually, the super late models have to weigh 2,900 pounds. And I think the juniors have to weigh 3,000. So we actually gain power and lose weight. Um, and the track is a lot bigger at CNS. I think it's a three-eighths mile. And 
I can't remember what Madeira is, but I think it's definitely a lot bigger. So we're getting bigger speeds there too. I think we're hitting about 120 before we enter the corner. So it's definitely a lot faster, but I'm enjoying it for sure. It's a good experience for sure. So let's talk about the two cars and your ability to be able to adjust those two cars. Do you find out that there's actually more adjustments available to you on the junior late model car or are you able to make more different adjustments on, on the super late to, to kind of um, give you the, the, the handling that you're looking for? Yeah, so that's a great question. I feel like we're making more adjustments on the junior late model. Um, I also feel like the junior late model racing is kind of more momentum because you can't really, um, if you make a mistake, it really affects your lap time. You don't really have the sheer power to make up for that. Unlike the super late model, if you make a little mistake on your entry or exit, you usually have the just the sheer power, like I said, to kind of make up for that mistake that you made. But um, I think that we make more adjustments at Madeira than compared to the super late model. Yeah, I hear that from everybody. Uh, they kind of said that super late model is kind of like, you know, you almost got what you got, you got what got what you have when you get to the track. It's not a whole lot of things that you can do to that particular car. So um, I, I know this is probably going to be a stupid question. Which one do you like driving more? You know, that's actually a good question, too. I love driving the super late model. Um, I wish we could be battling up front. But since I'm a rookie, we have to start in the back of the field for each race. Um, so it's definitely a little more difficult to get back up to the front, but I think right now I like driving the soup, uh, excuse me, the junior late model a little better just because we're up front. Um, I feel like there's also more competition for me and plus it's televised. So I can get my name out a little more. That's right. Well, I think you'll probably, we'll, we'll, we'll ask you that, that question again at the end of the season and see with the more experience in the super late model if maybe you give us a little bit of a, a, a different answer. And one of the questions I was gonna ask you is that, um, which, which I think you, you may have already addressed, is what's the big difference between these two tracks? You know, um, one of them's in California, one of them's in Colorado, the difference in the length of the tracks, but is there any characteristics um, between the two tracks that really stand out that makes it I don't want to say difficult, but a little bit challenging to be able to go from one track to the other. Yeah, so um, obviously there, there's the size difference too. So um, Madeira Speedway is smaller, um, but everything, even though you're going uh, slower speeds, since the track's smaller, everything happens really quickly. And then at Colorado National Speedway, even though the track's bigger, you're going faster. So like I said, the, everything's happening probably around the same quickness, if you will. Um, everything's happening really fast. Everything's coming at you really fast. So you have to have that fast reaction time. Um, but track wise, I'd say that the banking is a big uh, difference at Colorado National Speedway. There's a lot more banking than at Madeira. Madeira is pretty flat. There's, I'd say maybe only like two or three degrees of banking at Madeira, uh, give or take a few degrees, but there's not that much at Madeira. And then uh, Colorado National Speedway, there is a good amount of banking. So you can kind of, you don't have to use as much brake because the car doesn't slide up as much. You kind of kind of just ride the apron right there on the line. But at Madeira Speedway, you have to use a little more braking. But besides that, um, I wouldn't say there's too much of a difference, but. Right. So, it, you know, we're, we're sitting here, it's, uh, it's, it's June the 10th and July and August and September is just around the corner. And man, it heats up in Madera, oh, yeah. California during those three months. So share with the audience what you're doing to make sure that you're physically fit. Uh, because we know that, you know, from a fitness standpoint, if you're not, if, when you get physically tired, you also get mentally tired. So what is Brody doing to keep yourself in shape to be ready for these hot months that are just around the corner? Well, so for me, I feel like uh, stamina is a big part for me. Um, having the longer races at Madeira Speedway, which is the 70 laps. So it's the 40 laps and then you get the 10 minute break and then you finish it off at the 30 laps. But yeah, like I said, stamina is a really big part for me. So I've been trying to ride my mountain bike a lot. Um, now that school's out for me, I'll be able to do that a lot more. So I've been uh, trying to go to the gym. We have an uh, in-home gym with a power tower and a treadmill. Um, and also running, running, uh, also helps a lot. I try to run, I think I ran two miles the other day, so not horrible, but I'm gonna try and get that up. I'm 
think I ran like an 11 minute mile. So not the fastest, but um, I'm going to try and prove that. But for sure, the helmet cooler, um, I'm at your speed a, is definitely helping here in the, will be helping here in the summer months. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, man, it gets toasty. I've been out there where, you know, the temperature, you go out and you practice on Thursday, you got to practice day Friday, you're practicing Saturday morning, racing Saturday night, that temperature gets up to 105 up to 110, 15, man, it is a cooker out there. So yeah. um, I applaud you for taking the initiative of getting yourself in shape because I, I promise you that's going to really pay off um, at the end of the season. So uh, yeah. Brody, is there any sponsors that you'd like to give a shout out to as we start to wrap up this interview? Yeah, I'd like to thank all of my sponsors and some very important people. I'd like to start off with California Apartment Association Value Insurance Plan, Assurance Risk Managers, uh, Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at Madeira, uh, Garage Condos, Storage You Can Own, MGF Trucking by My Go Flight, ANA Topper Sales and Truck Accessories, Lear Truck Caps and Tanas, Snug Top, The Perfect Fit, um, Amsoil Synthetic Racing Oils, Friends of Jacqueline, and then I'd like to thank Charlie Wilson, my spotter, and Wilson Motorsports, along with my dad and Tommy Hurst for all the support they give me. Wow. That's impressive that you got all those down, man. Very yeah. good. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. awesome job. Well, Brody, we sure wish you all the luck uh, in the next few months. We look forward to coming back and visiting with you again later in the year. So for all of you that are out there that are watching, if you're not following Brody Moore, you need to go check his website out at BrodyMooreRacing.com. Make sure to visit the fan zone. Click on, get on his digital newsletter. He's got a digital newsletter. It goes out every single month. It includes uh, what we call the Driving Five podcast, where he does a little interview with Tom Baker. But sign up for that digital newsletter. Make sure to follow him on all of his social media platforms. And uh, this is the young driver that you want to keep your eye at. So, Brody, thank you for being with us. And um, again, the best of luck here over the next few months in your racing. And uh, uh, good luck this weekend coming up. And that's, is it super late model this weekend or is it next weekend? Yeah. Super late model this weekend. Yeah. Super late model this weekend. So good luck to you. And for everybody, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you've missed any of our shows, you can always go to racespace.tv, click on on demand and everything is posted there. So again, my name is Rod Wortham and I want to thank all of you for watching and Brody, we'll talk to you real soon. Sounds good, Rob. Thank you.